Glad to welcome you to EMU today. We are so glad that you're joining us. I hope you're sitting back and enjoying. And I really want to thank you for taking the time to join us again today for EMU today. My name is Mark S. Lee, and I'm here with my co-host, Ms. Sarah Potteracki. How are you? Doing great today. How are you? you? Came back for war, huh? Yes, I did. All right. How did you like the first one? <laughs> you know, once I got into the swing of things, I really felt comfortable up here. Yeah. Well, you did a great job, and I want to thank all of you for watching. The response that we got to EMU today has been overwhelming. <clears throat> excuse me, from the university community and beyond. So again, just sit back and enjoy the conversation. Uh, we have a special uh, lineup of guests today as well. So. Uh, my first guest, our first guest is uh, Miles Payne. Right. Miles, you're the president of student body of Eastern Michigan I University. I am, I am, yes. Outstanding. Now, you got some shoes to fill here, by the way. I've heard. I've you heard. Yeah, here, Dr. James Smith, the yeah. president of the university, was on most recently and really gave us his perspective, right. which was right. a, lot of, a lot of fun. Right. What we want to do is, if, if I could, just kind of tell us very briefly about you. Who are you? So, name Miles Payne, uh, originally from Northwest Chicago, good old Illinois, a uh, huge Star Wars fan, believes that Oreos are the superior cookie, um, but aside from that, studying psychology and sociology with a minor in leadership, uh, and a fourth year senior, ready to graduate in April and go on to some other things. So we have something in common. I've heard. What do you think it is? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you were <laughs> in my position about two, three hundred years ago, something oh, like that. Maybe oh, maybe about two or three years ago, but gotcha. yes, gotcha. I gotcha. was actually president of student body here at Eastern Michigan okay. University. I had a wonderful experience here, yeah. and I had a great time, and uh, that was just a couple of years ago. Just a couple. Just All just right, what I'm going to do is to uh, really turn over to Sarah and have mm -hmm. you guys have a little conversation. I'll chime in where appropriate, Sarah. Okay. So as a student leader, what are some of the key challenges that you face? I think one of the biggest challenges is just simple communication. You know, you get caught up in this bridge between students and administration, and a lot of times, you know, you kind of forget what side you're on almost. But at the same time, you just want to take classes, you want to go to the movies, you want to study, you want to go to the rec, just like any other student. But you have to remember that each and every day, you have that responsibility to constantly be communicating the challenges from administration to students, but also from students up to administration. So bridging that gap of communication certainly can be difficult. And when we had President Smith on last time, he spoke of all of the different developments happening on mm -hmm. campus. What's your perspective on all of those and what have you contributed to campus? I love it. Um, seeing Strong completely gutted, you know, Strong needed a lot of love, so the fact that we got a lot of money from the state to really put some new equipment into Strong and completely renovate it top down is something that I and a lot of students are excited to see. Something that uh, my cohort Larry and I in student government have been really excited Who's about is... Larry is your... Larry is the vice president of the student body. So him and I uh, spearheaded and more so finished up a proposal brought on by student government last year to get the REC IM renovated. So now you were part of creating the REC, correct? Yeah, so <clears throat> briefly to tell you about that, when I was a student here, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, it was actually in the planning stages. Mm. And so myself, you may have heard of the Porter Building, yep. and mm. Dr. John Porter was the president of the university while I was president of the student body. So Dr. Porter would come to me and uh, ask me for the student's perspective, mm. and I, had to, I went to the Board of Regents with Dr. Porter, amongst others. But originally, I, I saw the blueprint. Yeah. So I was really engaged from day one. Right. I never saw the completion because I graduated. Right. But that's right. my history with the Rec I M building. But continue your conversation. Yeah. So the Rec I M building, you know, it was built, but over time, you know, just like any other building, it deteriorates over time. Mm -hmm. And so it's gotten to the point where, you know, we as students banded together and said, you know, we love this rec. We love coming here to swim and work out and play basketball. But, you know, the facilities just aren't as top notch as they need to be. So we banded together and we sent a proposal to the Board of Regents to pass a $35 opt out fee. So students that didn't want to pay this fee, they don't have to. Mm. And we ended up getting a huge amount more students to buy into this fee than we originally thought. So students said, yes, I want a new rec as well. They paid this fee, and so now we've just recently put about $155,000 of new weight equipment into the rec, and there's another order pretty much of that magnitude to come. So we're really putting a lot of new stuff into the rec, which we're excited about. And outside of the rec, what are some other things that you guys have been touching on? So outside of the rec, on campus or like off campus? Um, Within the community, on campus, anything. Okay. okay. So a really cool thing that Larry and I have been really excited about is 
is access to hygiene products. So one thing that we started doing in the student government office for a long time, student government has been handing out free condoms. But we thought, you know, we have a lot of, you know, students on campus that need different products in a pinch. You know, a lot of menstrual products can be expensive off campus. And so a lot of times if you're, you know, running between classes and you're just in a pinch, what do you do? And so we started offering free menstrual products in our office and we're currently working with the Women's Commission on campus, Snow Health Center, even some off-campus vendors to see if we can get free menstrual products across campus in various locations. Do you find the student engagement, <coughs> excuse me, the engagement of students with government, student government, is it increasing, is it decreasing? Do you find a, a great level of engagement by the students here mm. at MU? It varies. It varies. Going into this year, we felt that there was a lack of knowledge about student government. There's a lot of students that know of student government, but they, not nece they don't necessarily know what we do, why we're doing it, how the process works, and that how we are a voice for students. If students have an issue, they can come to us and say, hey, this is going on. Can you address this? Can you work on that? So we did find that student engagement fluctuates year by year. I think, you know, as we were speaking right before this came on, we're really excited that we feel a lot of students this year are getting more into student government than in past years before. It sounds like your schedule is very hectic. A little bit. <laughs> what, take us through a typical week for you. What is it like? Oh, yikes. For me, I mean, I, I try to wake up early, hit the rack before, you know, pump some iron, try to keep healthy, but that doesn't always happen. I'm a student just like everyone else, so I love to sleep in. Um, but I'll sleep in, you know, go to class, you know, maybe down a quick protein shake or a quick apple before class, head to class, sit there, you know, space out a little bit, but I try to pay attention, write my notes as well. Um, but for a lot of students, you know, we are a 70% commuter campus, so a lot of students, they love to come here, go to class, get their education, and then they go work a job or, you know, go hang out with friends and family. For me, I love to hang out in the student center. Like, that's my favorite spot on campus to just kind of enjoy the energy and the atmosphere of students around. So after I hit class or I hit the rec, I'm headed there to just kind of hang out with friends. That's one of the things that's not changed in all the years of EMU. Uh, when I was president of the student body here, we were heavily, probably about 80% commuter school, yeah, yeah. essentially, and a good number of students certainly lived on campus. Um, when you see the students coming from, let's say, Metro Detroit mm -hmm. or driving every day, whatever the case mm -hmm. might be, how do you get those students involved in university as well? That's tough. I mean, a lot of times it's just simply in regards to timing. You know, we had a uh, recent program that student government teamed up with the Office of Advancement, and it was called Meetup Mondays. And a lot of students don't necessarily have spaces on campus to network. You know, they come to college and they hear the word networking and they're like, what is this? I don't know how to do this. And so we scheduled this program to be between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. So to some people, that's like, that's weird. I have classes. But to a lot of commuter students, that's their lunch break. You know, they've already gone to class. They have another class later. So they are simply hanging out, grabbing lunch. And so we said, hey, we'll have some free food for you, come network. And so I think a lot of times in regards to hitting commuter students, it's just a matter of timing. Mm -hmm. Nothing like free food. Nothing like free food, <laughs> Can you yes. relate to that? Mm -hmm. Can you relate oh to his lifestyle as, <laughs> as a student as well, his busy, hectic schedule? Yes, not quite on the same level, but I definitely hey, busy understand. Busy is busy. That's, what has the transition been like for you and for Larry, I'm sure, going from being just your everyday student to suddenly being more in the eye mm. of campus life? That's, that's a really good question. Um, <laughs> both Larry and I were in housing and residence life beforehand, so I was an RA for two years. And a funny story, if I can uh, digress a little bit, Larry was also an RA the same year I was an RA. Mm -hmm. And they have these things called RAs of the year, and so I was the best RA of my hall, he was the best RA of his hall, and then they pick one overall RA of the year, and I'm still mad to this day, but Larry beat me out for RA of the year, and I'm still upset to You're this still day. Upset to I'm this still day. upset to this <laughs> day. Sounds like a little competition here. Uh, maybe a little bit. By the way, what's Larry's last name? La you mentioned it several times. Larry's last name is Larry Borum the third. Okay. We'll make sure you give us proper due <laughs> as well. Uh, but we were both in housing, and so they have this little saying that, oh, you live in a fish bubble. So I thought it was a fish bubble before, like a fish bowl, everyone sees you, but you don't necessarily see them. Mm -hmm. And then I stepped into this role. It's completely different. Walking down the street, and some freshman walks up to you, and they're like, hey, you did that thing. I'm like, yeah, man, sure. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. 
I'm sure there's a factor of people being slightly intimidated. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit. I find you very approachable. Well, thank so. you. Thank you. <laughs> well, I, I think that's a good point. I think when, you know, again, I can relate to what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're representing the students. Yeah. And, and you're representing the different locations, different facilities, different events across campus and beyond the campus here, the campus environment. Mm -hmm. From your standpoint, you seem very comfortable. Do you have, what are your aspirations in our closing minute or so, what are your aspirations as you uh, graduate and, and, and leave Eastern Michigan University? So as I graduate, something that's really important to me is educational policy. You know, a lot of times, you know, we look at our K through 12 system and, you know, education can be spotty and it can vary from, you know, here or there. So I'm really excited to go into graduate school, hopefully get a GA ship somewhere, uh, and really start to focus and do a lot of research on how we can conduct our K through 12 education system in a equal and more equitable way for a lot of our communities. Have you enjoyed the experience of being a student here? Absolutely loved it. And what's been the biggest, I guess the best experience being a student body president? The best experience is, you know, people like you all. You know, it sounds super cheesy, but it's so true. You know, being in spaces where I get to meet fellow people that just love and live for Eastern just so much and each and every day they just love to come to school, love to come to class, love to come to clubs and orgs and you know all these kind of events that just love Eastern with every fiber of their being. That's what gets me up at the Do end of the day. Do you see that as well Sarah from your standpoint? Oh definitely. There's, yeah. there's a big community going on here. Yeah, yeah. And, and from your standpoint how do you um, uh, see the perception of student government or close even or so uh, from the general population at large? This year, at least, it has been very visible. Has it's it? been nice to see both uh, Miles and Larry out on campus and see all the changes that have been happening and seeing that all come into the, the eye of the students. And for the remainder of this academic year and closing, uh, what's the biggest issue that you think still needs to be addressed? The biggest issue that still needs to be addressed, uh, there's been a lot of progress in what students call the Black Student 10-Point Plan, and there's still a lot of work that needs to be done to that. A lot of work has been done, but there's certainly a lot more steps we can take in regards to making the community at Eastern more accessible for our black students. I to tell you, so we had the president of the university on, last show, on our last show, we had the president of the student body. It's really interesting to get the different perspectives, both from the administrative level and from a student perspective as well. Uh, thank you, Miles Payne, for coming thank in. We you appreciate so much. it. We just uh, wish you much continued success and, and keep up the great work. Thank you so much. Absolutely. We look forward to having you back after this commercial break on EMU Today. So
Welcome back to EMU. Today we are so pleased that you are joining us and we're going to continue the great conversation on this program which is focused on general interest, interest topics here at the great Eastern Michigan University. I'm so pleased to welcome back on this segment with my co-host Sarah Potteracki. How you doing Sarah? Doing great. Well, that was a great interview you did. Very well done with the Miles Payne and uh, great things happening at the university level from a student perspective. But what we're going to do is to pull the lens back, and I'm so pleased to welcome Dr. Lewis Hershey. He is a PhD from Louisiana State University, he has 29 years of experience in higher education, and he also has an MA and a BA from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and currently is the head of the Department of uh, Marketing and a professor of marketing at Eastern Michigan University over at the College of Business. Dr. Hershey, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. It's so glad to have you. And before you came to Michigan, you were in North Carolina, Louisiana, Missouri, and Georgia. So your, your academic background is really extensive. That's another way of saying I'm old, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what brought you here? Uh, the opportunity to be a department head was one of the primary attractions to coming to Eastern Michigan. Uh, by chance, I was familiar with Eastern Michigan because I competed against them as a senior mm -hmm. in speech communication in the forensic program, which you still have here on this campus. So I knew a little bit about the school, but I was also very much interested in getting back up into the northern part of the country. Uh, I had lived in Rhode Island for many years mm -hmm. before my family retired to the south, and so the chance to come back up a little further north where you have four seasons instead of one, like we have in North Carolina, uh, was one of the attractions. But specifically, this program here, with its strong uh, sales component, was one reason I was attracted to this department. And we'll come back to that in a second. And you are in the College of Business? That's correct. And how many students, Dr. Hershey, are, are in the College of Business? Do you have any idea? A little over 3,000 total. Really? Maybe eight or 900 uh, distributed across a couple of different graduate type of programs or certificates. And then, depending upon the semester, between 21 and 2,400 in the undergraduate programs. Yes, sir. I think you're taking classes over in the College of Business, aren't you? Yes. I'm a marketing minor, though. So I don't know if you guys count those towards the numbers or if we it's do. just. Okay, awesome. That I'm one of those uh, several thousand. And, and so, what types of classes have you been taking, if I could ask, over in the College of Business? So to have a marketing minor, it only takes about seven classes, I believe. So I'm right now delving into my elective courses, but thus far I've taken behavioral courses and then the requirements. It's always so, so great to see students such as Sarah in the College of Business really expanding your horizons, Dr. Hershey. I think that um, clearly she's taking marketing as a minor, and I think you got to be pleased to, to have someone of Sarah's capacity over the College of Business as well. Well, I'm rather fond of marketing minors because I'm one myself. Mm -hmm. Cool. My undergraduate degrees were in communication. My doctoral minor is in marketing. Awesome. So uh, it's never too late to start marketing. Yes. <laughs> so, so I know you've been here at Eastern probably is, is two years. Ago. I'm in my third year now. Oh, you got to be kidding me. No. I've been when I first met you. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Your class was the first one I saw the summer of 2015. That is amazing. You came in and evaluated me, I believe, right? Uh, you had guest speaker of, uh, was it Tim McIntyre exactly from Domino's? Right from Domino's. And so, so where I'm going though is, is so you're in your third, ac third academic year here, and there's a program, there's a sales institute that yes. you're very instrumental in really getting up and running. Tell, tell the viewers about the, uh, the program. Well, the sales institute was something of a brainchild that was underway long before I got here, okay. though I didn't know that at the time. Um, one of the backgrounds I had outside of academia were the couple of years I spent in retail financial planning as a salesperson. And so I knew the value of sales, and I also knew that it's an opportunity for a lot of people to make a transition from undergraduate school into a career path. Uh, here, what I was fascinated by was how little people knew about how much sales we've got. We have over 400 sales students every year. That's across that. all the semesters. Uh, we have a concentration available in sales, though most people don't know about it. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be going down to the University of Toledo, who are going to mentor us as part of our membership in the University Sales Center Alliance. They have 200 sales students. So we have twice as many and they have an entire school of sales there. So the upside of this is that we have a lot more students in many places that concentrate in sales. And we have opportunities to get even more support from external communities and stakeholders that are interested in recruiting those students. Have you ever thought, sir, about the, about the sales field as well? A lot of people will confuse marketing and sales. They're actually two functional areas. 
What are your thoughts on sales? I am one of those people that didn't know we had that department, and now it's or that um, concentration. We'll have to get you signed up. Yeah. <laughs> that's what. That's one of the great things about doing this program is to give the university community and beyond an opportunity to learn about these types of programs being offered by Eastern Michigan University. You've also had the opportunity of taking students, I think, across the country to other locales as part of this program. Talk to us about that. We're just getting started in that area and one of the reasons for having the Sales Institute is to raise funds so we can take students to more. Uh, close by travel is not too expensive, mm -hmm. but to travel much further, say to Florida like we went last November, uh, takes quite, quite considerable more resources than just a, a car trip. Uh, fortunately, we have a nice starting point because we're surrounded by sales centers, which means we're surrounded by sales competition opportunities. So we have sales centers at Toledo, we have them at uh, Bowling Green State, we have them at Central Michigan, we have them at Western Michigan, and we even have them sponsored by Quicken Loans, both in Detroit and in Cleveland. And the opportunities to go to those are just day trips, and so we'll give a chance for our students to have more opportunities to compete in sales competitions. And, and that was my question when it comes to the sponsors. So you have Quicken Loans, obviously headquartered in downtown Detroit. I know we have a very strong relationship with Quicken Loans, for example, but you're always looking for additional support to help these students get the exposure and, and certainly learn more about the sales field. Talk to us about the, uh, what you're looking for in terms of potential sponsors. Well, let me tell you what I would think the Sales Institute looks like in five years. Okay. In five years, we would have a space in the COB where students would walk into and be literally surrounded by the culture of sales. The logos, the brands, the point of purchase uh, information about the opportunities at, at various local Southeast Michigan companies would be all over that room. It'd be like going into a car dealership when you're waiting for your car and they have all the brochures of all the wonderful cars you can buy from them. It'd be like that. And the reason that that's important is because the opportunities to engage students to see how the things they're studying in a sales classroom or a marketing classroom get put into practice immediately when you're working in the field is, is pretty neat. Uh, for example, when I go down to Toledo, they have uh, excuse me, 15 gold sponsors, they have four platinum sponsors. Mm -hmm. When we went to Florida last year for the competition, there were banners with 32 different sponsors of their sales center. That sales center paid for 100 competitors and their coaches to fly into Orlando for a two-day competition at no expense to them. Mm -hmm. So in five years, we'd like to be somewhere along those lines, where we're not only sending students to competitions, but we're bringing people here for competitions at the College of Business at Eastern Michigan University, because we need to do a better job at telling the story of sales at Eastern and why it's a great place to be. And I think that's the beauty of, of EMU's College of Business, as well as all the colleges represented here across our 20, 22,000 students, is the opportunity to get that practical experience. I mean, you have a great level of guest lecturers, adjuncts, full-time lecturers, people with that great experience who could bring that experience into the classroom as opposed to maybe just uh, uh, giving the theoretical perspective. Uh, sir, from your standpoint as a student, do you find that as a benefit as a student taking classes here, getting that practical experience as opposed to just a the theoretical side, if you will? Where we are situated seems pretty opportune for getting out and experiencing a lot of things in my areas of study specifically. Uh, the one thing I'm super interested in, what, how would you describe the difference between the marketing program and the sales program to someone who's currently in the other program? Okay. All of the marketing function is about communicating. The ways they communicate and the mediums they use to communicate are different. The sales function is the interpersonal dimension. And for some kinds of products, particularly products that are either expensive or complicated or both, it's very difficult to put all that into an information that is impersonal. Mm -hmm. Especially for some kinds of products, say life insurance, which no one really wants to buy, but maybe everybody should, you need someone who can explain how that benefits that person and their family. Okay. Hmm. So, again, two distinct areas. And, and really, do you find the skill set uh, similar for a marketing person versus a salesperson? Are they two, two distinct skill sets? I think they both have to have the same kinds of skill sets, but in different proportion. Mm -hmm. And by that, I would say that the soft skills of communication, both written and spoken, are more important in sales than they are in marketing. Uh, a salesperson still needs to have analytical skills to understand their customers and to figure out how to 
alter offers to make something more attractive to them, but probably not as much as a marketer does because they do more analytics than a salesperson would. Okay. You learning anything about this conversation? I, the conversation? I definitely what, am. What's the key headline that you're learning? What do you think? I, I wish I had known about the mm -hmm. sales program because it definitely seems like something I would have explored um, from what I'm gathering from it. There's a little bit more of working with people in oh, yes. sales. And that's something I thrive on. So maybe I'll look into that. Well, and I think in life, you have to build relationships. You have to work with people. Whether or not you're working in marketing or if you're working in sales, those are two distinct skills or one critical skill that you got to have no matter what you're going to do with your life. If, if people want to get more information about if someone like a Sarah or other students around campus, even alums want to get, become engaged, where can they get more information? Is there a website? How we definitely they, have a website in the College of Business. Mm -hmm. All the departments have them. Uh, there is a website for the Sales Institute. Uh, it's a little harder to find now because we're still tweaking the change in the, in the web program that you've seen uh, from our, our web presence. You can call us at 734-487-3323. We'll be happy to return your calls. You can email me directly. You can find our contact information on the website as well. Uh, but also, if you're interested in studying with us, just come by. <laughs> if you're interested with sponsoring our Sales Institute, please invite me out to your location so I'll have a chance to see what you're doing out there and how we can be of help. In our closing seconds, you're getting out quite a bit as well. I know you've gone to different locations around the Detroit area to meet with different businesses quickly, right? Yes. I've met about uh, a different business every week since I've been here. That's incredible. And what's the response been? Pretty good. Has it? I think we've seen an uptick in the response that we get for recruiters. Uh, sometimes there are people that recruited here several years ago, but as there's been change in leadership positions, both in their situation and ours, uh, they've kind of lost track of that. So we sometimes would lose that institutional memory. And so part of what I'm trying to do is make sure I put a face both on the department and the sales institute so people know who to contact to get things answered about how we can be of help. Dr. Lewis Hershey, we want to thank you for coming in and sharing information about the Sales Institute. He is the head of the Department of Marketing and Professor of Marketing at Eastern Michigan University's College of Business. And we want to thank you all for tuning in for this week's or this particular EMU Today. And we will check you out next time on EMU Today.